flowing through six countries and at 2,700 miles long. How long? 2,700 miles. Oh, and it must be the 12th longest river in the world. It is, and funnily enough, it supports over 60 million people who live along its mighty banks, Glen, would you believe it? Today on Planet Cruise Weekly, we explore one of the hottest new tickets in river cruising, the magical Mekong. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about uh, one of the world's greatest and least explored rivers, the mighty Mekong. Now, as the popularity of river cruising continues to grow, travellers are casting their nets wider in order to find new routes to explore. And the Mekong offers the perfect chance to explore the heartland of Asia in pampered luxury. So it's fed by snowmelt from the Himalayas of Tibet, and the Mekong flows 2,700 miles to the sea in South Vietnam, a distance comparable to that between Los Angeles and New York City. Now, the Vietnamese call it Song Kyu Long, uh, the Nine Dragons River for the nine branches of the Mekong Delta, where land or water intertwine to make the perfect additions for growing rice. Now, although it flows through six countries, as we mentioned before, and it feeds scores of people along the way, the Mekong is actually one of Asia's least developed rivers. And that's thanks to the lack of industry along its banks. But it teems with life. In fact, it's considered only second biologically um, to the Amazon in the sense of its diversity. Thousands of plants, fish, amphibians, and mammals have been recorded in its waters and along its banks, including many rare, unique, and previously unknown species. Now, the Mekong is also one of the last strongholds of the magnificent and ex extremely rare Irrawaddy river dolphins. Now, the river system is especially renowned for its magnitude and diversity of large fish species, whilst, whilst forests surrounding the river are home to a plethora of wonderful bird and mammal life. Now, you'll visit lively cities like Phnom Penh and Ho Chi Minh City, which teem with businesses and motorbikes, as well as rural river towns where residents will eat floor mats from sedge, as they have done uh, throughout the generations. And beyond the poverty, you will witness a sense of incredible beauty that will delight the eye from dazzling religious sites like the richly detailed Angkor Wat and sunset pink Bantai Shrey to the timeless glimpses of everyday life along the Mekong River. Unexpectedly uplifting a trip on the Mekong does offer a sense of resilience uh, because these people are remaking their lives, they're rebuilding cities destroyed by acts of war and extending a wonderful warm welcome to their visitors. You'd be happy to know most of the major river cruise lines do offer a series of Mekong trips in Vietnam and Cambodia and most river ships on the Mekong are recently built and tastefully done replicas of colonial river steamers accommodating fewer than 100 passengers so it's a really nice personal experience. In general the cabins are practical and comfortable although recent additions include more luxury options. All excursions are included in the cruise fare and entry visas are usually arranged by the river cruise company themselves. Now some of the main players here are Amazon Waterways, Avalon Waterways, Uniworld, Viking Cruises and Quasi Europe. Although the itineraries are offered for most of the year, the optimum time to go is in the winter, from November through February when it's cooler, and the rainy season which runs from July through to October has passed. So what itineraries are there on the Mekong River itself? Now be aware that most Mekong River cruises come as part of a long two weeks or more land tour, including several nights in hotels, as well as overnights aboard the ship, and most start and end in Vietnam, beginning in Hanoi and ending in Ho Chi Minh City or vice versa. Now they include a flight to Siem Reap and a sail on the Mekong with, with ports in Cambodia and Vietnam. And if you want the cruise only portion, look for a seven night trip like the ones offered on Avalon Waterways. Now, by and large, the itineraries are quite similar, including uh, the cities you've already mentioned, such as Phnom Penh, plus, of course, the important temples and visiting sites like Hanoi's Museum of Entology and, of course, the um, infamous Killing Fields. Major markets and rural villages along the Mekong as well, pretty much all the ships and cruises cover those. Now, where it may vary slightly is when it comes to specific stops that the companies offer. For instance, Viking River Cruises includes a visit to a local orphanage, that's in Kampong Chang, and that's actually supported by the company. While Am Waterways, for instance, adds a stop to an English-speaking language school in Tartum that they sponsor. All of the lines, of course, will give you a chance to pick up uh, local handicrafts, although the location of the shops may well differ. If it's important to you to see Halong Bay, the surreal seascape of limestone pillars located in the Gulf of Tonkin, note that some lines, like Amma Waterways, include the bay in their basic itineraries, cruising aboard a traditional junk boat. Mm. Now, other lines offer Halong Bay as an extension to their cruise at added costs, 
Bangkok is another typical extension. Now, Hanoi is one of the most well-known destinations you'll stop at. It's a city where motorbikes outnumber cars in a city of seven million, and being a pedestrian can be a death-defying experience. The main attraction here is a visit to the infamous Hanoi Hilton, where American POWs, including Senator John McCain, were held during the Vietnam War, called the American War here, of course. It's edged with barbed wire and embedded with shards of glass and a sombering reminder of what humanity is capable of. Now, other highlights are the Museum of Ethnology, um, where you get an astonishing idea of the ethnic diversity of Vietnam. They've got art and artefacts from 54 different ethnic groups that inhabit the country. Or you could take a visit to the ancient temple of literature, which at 900 years old was Hanoi's first university. A spin through the old quarter reveals a bazillion vendors selling everything imaginable. 36 ancient streets where peddlers trade as they have done for centuries and you'll see women in conical hats balancing baskets on their shoulders, seemingly oblivious to the chaos that surrounds them. In the evening, most lines offer a water puppet performance, a uniquely North Vietnamese art form celebrated rural life and folklore for over 1,000 years. Now next up, Siem Reap is Cambodia's fastest growing city and its modern streets and luxury hotels are in direct contrast to its star attraction, which is the 12th century temple of Angkor Wat and probably one of the greatest experiences of all my travels. An amazing place. Over a hundred stunning temples dating back over a thousand years that pepper the dense Cambodian jungle, some of which like Tar Prom are being reclaimed by nature with spectacular results. Now built for King Seravam II over the course of 37 years by 300,000 workers and slaves, the complex architectural grandeur of the Angkor temples is arguably unmatched amongst ancient ruins anywhere in the world. The temple is surrounded by a massive moat and a wall with bas reliefs depicting scenes from Hindu epics. Watching the sunrise over Angkor Wat is an experience you'll never forget and highly recommend it. It would take days to explore all, but a trip here is normally between one and three nights, giving you the opportunity to see the main temples. And this really is one of the best things we'll ever do in life. The, 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 the vision of seeing the sun rise over Angkor Wat will always stay with me. We saw it rise, we also saw the sunset from several of the temples, it's brilliant. Um, another one of the great temples as well um, is one that's called the Bayan Temple and it's one of the few Buddhist temples in Angkor. It features 200 striking faces that are carved into 54 towers. Um, it's really amazing actually because on each of the towers you have four faces of the king which is Jaravam and the seventh and it's said that wherever you are in the temple there's always a face watching you and it's a bit un 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 kind of uncanny because literally wherever you turn you can see like an eye or just part of a face kind of peeking around and following you. Let me move on to Phnom Penh which is the capital of Cambodia in 1432 and then again in 1865 where the French first colonised the country and under the French protractorate King Norodom it reclaimed it as the capital. Now he constructed the magnificent royal palace that still stands today, a complex that includes the Silver Pagoda, the Cheruman Palace and the National Museum of Cambodia. Now the mass graves of the Killing Fields feature a memorial tower with the skulls of victims and ensure that the two million Cambodians who lost their lives during the Khmer Rouge regime will never be forgotten. So along with visiting the Killing Fields themselves, another must visit for me really was what's called S21 or the Toll Sling Genocide Museum. It's a former high school uh, that housed over 17,000 prisoners. There's black and white photos all over the walls, including young children who were captured by the Khmer Rouge. Uh, and of the 17,000 that went in, only 15 survived. And there are before and after photos. It's, uh, it's a chilling example of what the Khmer Rouge did, but we, again, we'd recommend that you did it. Then we move on to Tan Chau, and this is a South Vietnam river town located near the border of Cambodia and a good excuse to explore via a traditional rickshaw ride. Now the main highlight here is to watch the local people at work. Tan Chau is also famous for its silk, particularly a very fine deep black silk dyed with the berries from the ebony tree. Another local industry is the sedge grass weaving, producing mats and other useful items. Or you can visit a floating fish farm where you might see 140,000 uh, so red talipers raised in frames by families who live there on the premises. Again, in direct contrast to, to some of the big cities like Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City um, is Vinh Hao. It's one of the real cultural treats of exploring Southeast Asia via River Cruise because it's not accessible except via boat. The residents here live the same simple life that their ancestors did and the families who live along the delta 
fish and raise vegetables, and nearly 70% of the residents are farmers, working their fields by hand and wearing the traditional conical hats made of palm leaves. The Khmer Rouge, of course, burn these villages during their reign, but again, a testament to the local people, they'd rebuilt them all after six months. Then on to Sardec, and this is known for its lively markets where purveyors lie in the riverfront, hawking everything imaginable, including local delicacies like rat served fried, Very which is always nice, snakes, frogs, snails, and duck embryo. Um, now, Sardec was the childhood home of Marguerite Duras, one of France's best known authors. Her autobiographical novel, The Lover, describes her affair with Hoi Toi Li, the son of a wealthy Chinese businessman, where she was a teenage girl in French colonial Vietnam. Visitors to Sardec have the opportunity to see the beautifully preserved courtyard home of Mr. Mio Hoi Toi Li. Next up, Kai B. Now, of all the towns in the southwest countryside of the Mekong Delta, Kai B is probably the most dynamic. It's located on a tributary of the Mekong, so you'll get there via Sampan, cruising what used to be an important floating market. Now this market dates back to the 17th century and merchants advertise what they're offering via uh, a sample themselves that they're sailing out and they basically dangle the goods from a bamboo pole. Uh, the main attraction is the factory of artisans there uh, who demonstrate how to make uh, things like coconut taffy which comes in a variety of different flavours, uh, popped rice that they do in a big uh, pan, it's their own version of popcorn if you like, uh, and also rice wine. There's lots of sampling and you may even have a chance to sample snake wine um, which actually has, in many cases, a dead snake inside Lovely. with the wine over it. On then to Ho Chi Minh City or the former Saigon, and this is not located on the Mekong but set along the Saigon River, which was designed by the French to be a mini Paris. Now you can wander down timeless alleys past ancient pagodas and bustling spice markets, while around the corner skyscrapers soar with designer bars and gourmet restaurants. Head for the Rex Hotel and you'll be in the heart of Ho Chi Minh City. Most of the city's sites are walkable from there. Uh, the pre-war uh, built Rex was right at the centre of social life during the Vietnam War. Its fifth floor rooftop bar and restaurant was the liveliest place in town for the American troops on R&R &R and looking for some stories. Now you can also explore the infamous Chi Chi Tunnel Network which was built by the Viet Cong during the war or simply enjoy a drink. The Vietnamese, funnily enough, love coffee, Glen, uh, and the go-to shop is called Highlands Coffee. Or if you want to try and eat, then go to Pho 2000, where President Clinton dined in November of 2000. Hopefully that's helped. Hopefully that's given you a good idea of the mighty Mekong, as we refer to it here at Planet Cruise, and really what a wonderful array of different cruise options you've got for exploring it now in the present climate. It is growing river cruising. It's a great yeah, way to explore the heart of a destination, isn't it? And I Definitely. know it's, it's right up on your top list of yeah, things to do. Yeah, and it's still cheap out there compared to some of the other places. So again, you can go out there for reasonable prices and uh, really experience it. So it would be good to go. Now, if you do want to find out more, click the link there. It will take you straight away through to our website uh, and to speak to some of the team members like Glenn, who will be able to book you onto a Mekong River cruise. A big thank you to everyone that's got in touch over the past couple of weeks. Glenn, people that want to get in touch and ask us questions about the Mekong or comment, what do they do? Uh, you can check us out at, uh, make sure you email us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk. You can go onto our Facebook or Twitter. Uh, also go on to our YouTube channel, it's free to subscribe, check out all the other episodes. And of course, either check out cruises for the Mekong, or if you don't fancy that, we've got loads of cruises around the world on our website, planetcruise.co.uk. And then you can filter the cruises to suit your needs. So a big thank you to these people that got in touch over the last week, Gillian Fulbrook. Um, she said, oh, that's my New Year sorted. And that's because Cruising Maritime, of course, have announced a vegan cruise. Yeah, very nice. And also a big thank you to David Winterton, um, who said, watch Planet Cruise TV and discover how to enjoy cool luxury on Europe's picturesque rivers with Emerald Waterways. And he tweeted out very kindly at our episode that we did on Emerald Waterways. That was nice, wasn't it? Thanks for watching. For myself, Keith and Glenn. Cheers, guys. We'll see you soon.